Hey there, baseball fans. I'm Ben, and I'm back today opening cards from the Junk Wax era. And I've got a weird smattering of packs today. I've got 1993 Fleer Ultra. I've got 1992 Fleer. I've got 1989 Tops, but these are not wax packs. They're the same size as wax packs, but they are in cellophane. So I'm not sure why those exist, to be honest with you. Um, so there you go. Got a 1989 score and a 1988 Fleer. Let's just get some of the junkier ones out of the way because I've opened a lot of these 88 Fleer in my day, and there's just nothing too exciting about them, to be honest with you. Such a funny little design. Not great players, except for you can pull a Mark Grace rookie card. And listen, most people aren't that excited about Mark Grace. Mark Grace is one of the players I collect in my personal collection, so I'm stoked to get another one of these, especially in great condition. Uh, not perfect centering, but obviously really good corners and whatnot psyched about that one so that is a good way to start us off you know if i'm gonna be opening 88 clear might as well pull something i like so there's keith hernandez we'll put that aside too there you go so honestly pulling that out of there the rest is gravy we'll go with another kind of like very unexciting set 1989 score i kind of bundled these all together because uh they are pretty lame just to open up. There's a Tim Raines, at least. Hall of Famer there. Speed and power combined. Ron Darling. And that's about it for that. All right, so these 19, weird 1989 Topps cello, cello packs, but they, they're cello packs, but they're not bigger. Usually cello packs are like jumbo packs. I'm not sure, again, why these exist or where they came from. But we won't have, uh, probably, ooh, they still have gum in them now. But they don't have um, any wax stains, and they are actually kept in very good shape because no moisture gets in. So there's that. But, of course, they are 1989 tops, which means there's nothing very, very interesting or exciting about them either. Um, wow, Sherman. I mean, Sherman, you're just calling out to have me check you out. This is a rookie card for Sherman Corbett, where he actually got into 34 games for the Angels in 88, two wins, one loss, 28 strikeouts, and one save with a 4.14 ERA. We're going to look him up, see what happened to old Sherman Corbett. Someone I've never heard of, but those glasses are amazing, and I want to see what happened to him. There's Jack Morris, a Hall of Famer. He'll go on the kind of Hall of Famer list. One more 1989 Tops cello pack. Wait for a piece of gum. And the gum is actually much better shape too because it hasn't had moisture in it and all that kind of good stuff that you get from those wax packs. But I do love a good wax pack, as you know. I like I think the cards. It gives the cards more character. There's a Don Mattingly All Star. There you go, Polly Packs. And this is a great shape. Good centering, nice corners, not bent or bowed at all, which you, you get a lot of with these true brown cardboard cards. All right, so moving on to 1992 Fleer. This is Fleer's first step up after the just disastrously gross, weird yellow banana card set of 1991. Uh, this is a different design, a better design. Um, Still kind of weird, not as good as 93 Fleer, I thought was just phenomenal. So compared to that, it's not as good, but there's Lee Smith, Hall of Famer. Put him in the kind of Hall of Famer pile. Looks like I got a Clemens insert in here. Let's see what it is. Maybe it's the autograph, maybe it's the, there he is, Roger Clemens career highlights insert. So that's a good one, Prime of Life. So this is towards the end of that set, number 11. Coming into his modern times, as they think. Not knowing that he's got a lot more ahead of him in his career, both on the Yankees and the Blue Jays, plus some performance-enhancing drug issues that have so far kept him out of the Hall of Fame. But little, little did they know in 1991 that that's what was happening. There's David Cohn, and there's Dave Justice. I love these Pro Vision cards from Fleer. So, really, that was a good pack. 
you know, a few, few cards worth mentioning. And now we're on to 1993 Fleer. This is the third year for 1993 Fleer Ultra. And, um, and this has Dennis Eckersley inserts. They really copped a lot of the same look and feel as 1992 Fleer Ultra, which is updating the, uh, the marbling a little bit and the logo a little bit. But um, yeah, so because people love that 1992 Fleer Ultra set. I just opened a handful of those. I actually don't like these cards as much because you can't read the names with this gold. There's Eric Karos. Not sure why that matters, but for a moment there, he was a big deal. I can't really read the names all that well. Hopefully you guys can see something in there. Craig Shipley, Doug Jones, Mike Jackson, Brett Saberhagen. Had some really great years. Ozzy Smith. Oh, Ozzy Smith. There you go. Couldn't even read it. Ozzy Smith. There he is. Looking sharp. I'm trying to see what shoes he's wearing there. Can't find him coming up. And there's the base card, Dennis Eckersley. Not the insert, but happy to have that one nonetheless. This is right around his Cy Young Award time. All right, and our last pack of the day before we look up old Sherman Corbett. stuck together a little bit. Mickey Morandini, when I was living in Philly, I remember watching him play. Tony Phillips, Dwayne Ward, Omar Vizcal, Mel Rojas, Andy Stankiewicz, Kenny Rogers. Yeah, so that was kind of a bust. Chris Sabo in the end there. That's kind of a bust. All right, so that, just a quick recap here. We got Eckersley and Ozzie Smith and Eric Karras for what it's worth. Um, Dave Justice Provision plus Lee Smith and that insert for Roger Clemens. Jack Morris, Tim Raines, Keith Hernandez, Don Mattingly, and the Mark Grace rookie card. So one of the best packs we actually had was 1988 Fleer. Who would have guessed it? Now what about old Sherman Corbett? What's going on with that guy? What happened with his career? Let's take a look here. There he is. Played three seasons for the Angels. Used to be the head baseball coach at University of Texas San Antonio. And now the assistant athletic director there. So good for him. Played from 88 to 90 in the bigs. Only had those stats that we saw there. And that's all we get. But what you can read between the lines here is that, yes, he stuck with baseball, got into the uh, academic world, and then uh, continue to climb the ladder and hopefully making a positive difference and impact in all these young athletes that are at the University of Texas San Antonio. So Sherman, you made it to the bigs, you got your street cred, and then you went off and, and made the world a better place, hopefully. So hats off to you, Sherman, and the rest of you, we will see you next time.